welcome <laughs> to Z Not Dead, a new comics reading series. <laughs> Can you believe it, Matt? No, I can't believe it, Brad. It's been four years that we've been in this egg. We've been in this egg for four years. And now we've hatched two beautiful snakes. Two beautiful snakes. Here to host Zine Not Dead. The fourth anniversary. That's right. Who here has never been to a Zine Not Dead before? Wow. That's a lot of people. Yeah, sure. Welcome. <laughs> I hope you like it. <laughs> Who here has been to a Zenot Dead before? All the other hands. Hell yeah, all right. 50 50. Hell yeah. Does anyone have the first Zenot Dead? Three, four? Yeah, pretty yeah. good. Hey. Pretty good. <laughs> all um, right. What else do we have to say here? Six um, readers? Today? Yeah. That's right. Uh, we're uh, the host. This is Matt oh, Davis yeah, yeah, yeah. of uh, Perfectly Acceptable Press. Yep, and uh, Brad Roloff of Bread Press. Uh huh. Very excited to have everyone here tonight. Who are the readers, Matt? Well, we got six of them. As I said, our first reader is Jules Darling. Uh huh. Followed by Ali Trigoso. And closing out the first half will be Gabby Crackcraft. Followed then by a brief intermission. intermission. It's good. Yes. It's so good. We love the intervention. Uh, and then starting out the second half will be none other than Max Morris. Mm -hmm. And then Marty Galloway. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then, then closing out the night, none other than Sir, Sir Lyra, Lyra Hill. Hill. Very exciting. Very, very excited. So, uh, right down to business then. I guess so. Our first reader, Jules Darling. Jules is a uh, cartoonist. And improviser. From yeah. Chicago. Uh, Z uh, Jules is an alumni of Xerox Candy Bar along with me, which was the uh, comics anthology out of SAIC. I've known Jules for a long time and very happy to have them on stage tonight. Yep. Jules' comics deal with queer identity, touching on autobiographical comics, uh, witchcraft, and, and uh, sci-fi. Science, science fiction. Science fiction. Yep, we're very excited to have Jules here tonight. Um, I guess without further ado, yeah. uh, Jules, Jules Darling.
eventually it kind of just picks back up. It's difficult to experience biases when you can't feel or taste. But I'm still as guilty of sloth as I ever was. Same old Liz. A sound? When you've gone so long between seeing another person, it's easy to lose yourself. Crawling through ruins, searching for a memory, a sense of belonging, a feeling half forgotten. Friend among the land of the dead. Twenty minutes to descent, Orbiter Clay. Thanks for reading the map, Anne. Of course. Are your optical sensors malfunctioning, Orbiter Clay? No, no. Just everything else. And I'm taking the shuttle in. Set to auto land. Did you pack sufficient baggage, Orbiter Clay? More than enough. Beginning final descent into SS Arcadia. Hey, Dayglow, get over here. Holy shit, Liz. Exactly the same. Unbelievable. It's good to see you too, Sal. I brought along my I brought along my drive. Would you like to? Yeah, yeah. Official duties. But please, let me welcome in committee you a little first. I have some important folks to introduce you to. Elizabeth Clay, Dean Flight, decent husband, first class botanist, and our shared research project, Joy. Sorry, Joy hasn't met an orbiter before. She's a little shy. Orbiter Clay, are you sure you wouldn't like anything to eat? We have more than enough to share. Thank you, but I, I can't. It's actually a common mistake. Did you miss it? Yes, but getting to see the other colonies, it's worth it. Speaking to long dead civilizations through their artifacts, realizing their tragic flaws now that they have all died out. I remember one colony, which marked their stockpiles of radiation with these huge, ominous memorials as a warning, not anticipating that future generations would be so fascinated. Can you imagine being slowly poisoned by something you found so beautiful? Shh. I have something I want to show you. Do you remember this place? Of course. Sneaking off, daydreaming about getting off this ship. I always felt so small. I had to explain the term earthling to Joy the other day. I mean, how do you even explain that concept to a child? We still use this world, word from a dead language from a long dead world. I used to be so afraid of feeling trapped on this ship, but somehow I made reasons to stay. I am a 
shit had them. You were always changing so much faster than I could. So I became someone else and I ran, but I'm still me. I, I brought something for you. It's a bracelet based on an ancient human design. It's beautiful, but I can't accept this. But I'll hold on to it for you. Same style. I read of an ancient tradition on Earth where you exchange bracelets with a friend. to carry the memory of them with you. Until you see one another again. Next reader, huh? Yeah. Ali Trigoso. Ali Trigoso is an uh, animator and cartoonist. Yep, uh, all the way from Texas, came here to study, stayed because they love it. Um, tell me about their work, Brad. Uh, a lot of their work deals with uh, weirdos and freaks living their best lives. True. Uh-huh. And what else, Matt? Uh, and it deals with difficult relationships, so mm -hmm. there's something for everybody there. Yeah. Um, we're really excited to have them here. <laughs> all the way from San Antonio. Yep. <laughs> All right, please welcome to the stage, Ali Trigoso. This is the uh, part of the snake bong that passed away, unfortunately, <laughs> just now. Uh, it was attached to a much larger device that we have previously used at Is He Not Dead to get snake high. Matt, you can see, is holding the other part of it. Uh, see, we, we have a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of snakes here at Is He Not Dead, as you can see. Uh, the snakes being greedy. Uh, Matt and I are both snakes. And uh, as you saw earlier, we were hatching for four years. I'm dying. <laughs> uh, I think we're actually good. Yeah? yeah you can okay, cool. <laughs> Thank you. because my work does not generally look like this and the work that I brought uh, for the merch table does not look like this. Um, so most of my work is hand-drawn and it looks like this and this and <laughs> this. And then we come to this, which is what I'm reading for you tonight. Um, it was originally supposed to be a 3D animation which thankfully I did not have to animate uh, for a class because I actually don't know how to animate in 3D. So I lucked out. It's a comic now. Um, so
So very briefly, I will put on my real face. This is not my real face. Give me one sec. They didn't give us the right size. So I think they probably looked for it. Tap, 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 tap. Little Muppet. 
was asking all these questions about when we were going to come visit her. And I didn't really know what to say. You know, I don't know about when we're coming to visit, and I told her I wasn't sure because I haven't got my schedule back from work. It's hard to see through my real face. <laughs> Thank you. Anybody want this? Yes. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> Throw it out. <laughs> okay. That was the raffle portion of Xenot then. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, give it up one more time. Yeah, How would you go, sir? Nice. Nice. <sighs> That's good. Um, next reader, huh? Yeah. Yep, Gabby Crackcraft. Yep, Hell yeah. that's right. I gotta put my hands on. Oh yeah. It's a pause. Um, Gabby is a cartoonist from Chicago. Mm -hmm. And fashion icon. That's right. Gabby is a celebrity on Tumblr, Instagram. Mm -hmm. Instagram. Maybe others. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Gabby's also an alumni of Xerox Candy Bar from back in the day. Yep. And I, I believe they're a, a published cartoonist as well. Yes, who published Gabby's work? Uh, gee, I forget. Uh, it was like one of my friends. Yeah. Um, uh, it's like kind of like wheat 
no. Bean Press. No. Uh, <laughs> Almost there. Uh, oh, it was you. Yeah. Bread Press. Bread Press. That's right. Bread yeah. Press published artist Gabby Crack Crab. Yeah. What a book. <laughs> Available at the merch table. At the merch table. Um, yeah. yeah. We're really excited to have Gabby here. Oh yeah. Um, without further, further ado. ado. Please welcome to the stage, Gabby Crackraft. Yeah. 
They came out. She was on the floor. We should, we should get Jean. He's right. I'll, I'll get Jean. But no one moves. Okay. I want to figure this out now. I'm not going home wondering who's a murderer. <laughs> I think we can all agree I can be counted out since I was in the confessional. <laughs> but I think we can also agree that almost everyone had a motive. Some of us had more motive than others. What? Just because we had a fight? Gigi was a super bitch, but I wouldn't kill her. Jesus. Oh, yeah, prove it, tough stuff. You can't just accuse people of that stuff. Ooh, scary man. Okay, Icky and Sticky or whatever your names are. <laughs> just shut up for a minute, please. Besides, I think I already know who killed Gigi. Ooh, Terry, yes, tell us your theory. Well, Jean, where were you when the lights went out? Me? What, what was, what was I doing? Jean, you didn't. You know what, you got me, I killed Gigi. <laughs> Give it up for Gabby. I'm feeling good, everybody. Yeah. Two, my cause. two snake hosts. Two, one reading. Two, um, yeah, about that, Matt. <laughs> I want to talk to you about that. Um, it, what's, what are these, you know? <laughs> what do you mean, my little tail? No, no, there's, there's two of them. <laughs> there's yeah, two, uh, two little tails. No, I, <laughs> I think you have legs, man. <laughs> Uh, what are you saying, Brad? Uh, I'm saying, um, I, I don't think you're a snake, man. You're, you got legs, and you're like, you're not scaly, you're like all slimy. I mean, oh, like, no, what? no, no, Brad. I what? see where you're coming from. No, what? You, you're seeing my new, uh, Z Not Dead t-shirt. Oh, and it's yeah. it's confusing you. <laughs> it's fucking sick. It's a sick shirt that we made together. <laughs> I now How remember. soon you forget. Yeah, I am remembering now, you know, snake brain. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it's small. like a, it's got a split phone. It's a drawing of both of us by uh, 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 Gabby Schultz, who is a uh, Z Not Dead alumna also. Uh, they're at the merch table, they're just $20. $20. But, but that's not what I'm talking about, man. It's not? No, uh, t t take it off, take it off. You, that's you're like, hard. Yeah, I know. Okay, all right. Yeah, get off, get it off. You're all slimy. You're like, oh, I took a dip in the water, no, you know, catch some fish, That's whatever. not how snakes work. <laughs> what do you mean? What, like, what, do you mean? what, like, what is, what is like a green little animal slimy with legs? Like, what is that? Like. A frog? No, 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 no. Yeah, no, no. Uh, I'm a think, snake. I I'm think a, it might be a I'm a snake. It's two snakes hosting Zine Not Dead, a no, new comics I, reading series. I, I really, I'm not Brad, sure about we'll talk about this uh, during right, the fine, intermission, fine. right? Yeah, the okay. The 15-minute yeah. intermission. It's so coming up next. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, countdown and the, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we'll do all okay. the things. So yeah. we're going to take a 15-minute intermission. We're going to work this out, talk mm -hmm. about what's a snake, what's Figure a frog, out, yeah. and, uh... Hang out, get a beer, check out the merch table. Yeah, all the proceeds go to the artists at the, at the merch table. That's right, we'll um, be back in about 15 minutes, uh -huh. and, and we have to do the uh, traditional Seen Not Dead intermission countdown. Get all ready. of us together, it starts from 10, 10 9, 8, 
seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. There it is. That's intermission. intermission. All right. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Trina, could you get the lights, please? I love you. Welcome back from the intermission, part two. Is he not dead? <laughs> oh, uh, so Brad. What? Um, I was thinking about what you were saying about legs. Yeah. Um, you're right that I have two legs, but um, I'm looking at you now, and uh, oh, what's that? Um, I, well, <laughs> yeah. I, uh, um, you have a, oh, a, a, there's a leg coming out of your body. Yeah, um, fuck, I, I don't, um, no, no, but you're the frog, it's, this isn't about me, man, like, you are clearly, like, you got, like, yeah, I'm just saying, like, you know, you know about frogs, <laughs> they start as tadpoles, they right. don't have legs, you, and then a leg, then like one leg comes one, out, like, you know, and then, are you, yeah, I'm saying you maybe do that. Are you saying four, four years? For four, four, four years, we have been perhaps tadpoles and not snakes? Yeah, and now you're becoming a frog. No, 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 you're the frog. No, I'm saying that we're both frogs. No, frog, man. No, 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 you're frog. You're, you're becoming a frog, too. Frog. You're, Frog, you know, frog, 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 Wow, now I got two legs. So you're a frog now. Yeah, you know what? This is fucking awesome. Yeah, you want, yeah, get, get. Scared of the microphone. It felt so good, all right, your turn. <laughs> that was pretty, pretty good, man. man. Two frogs. Being a frog is, ain't so, so bad. Seeing that dead. Four years. Two, two frogs. frogs. Zero snakes. snakes. You know what that spells? 420. Yep, put a G at the end, it spells frog. Frog. <laughs> <laughs> and, and guess what? Three more readers tonight. Boom. And it's Alex Knoll's birthday. Oh, yeah. How. Where is he? I can't see a fucking thing. He's right over there, there, I guess. Where is, he? Where is he? I don't know. Oh, he's standing way in the back. He's way in the back. Hey, happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> the next three readers. <laughs> All right, yeah, the next three readers. Oh. Uh, right now? One. Yeah, we can throw a shirt out. We got some extra shirts. <laughs> They are the misprints, they may be a little light, there might be some ink on the sleeve, who knows. Johnny, play me on. Throw it short. Just play something. Shirt music. Can someone get it? <laughs> I think someone got it. Okay. <laughs> that okay. felt good. <laughs> Thank you everybody. Thank you for coming. Um, our next reader. Let's get Morris. Uh, Max Morris. That's right. Ribbit. That's right. Frogs. Max is a great guy. He's read it. Is he not dead twice before? Just once. once one other but time. it was really good. I remember yeah, it was in two. In this space. Two uh, guys. Uh, you may know Max if you're involved in the comic scene in Chicago. He's, uh, he's been around for a while. He's, uh, he contributes to several anthologies. He's a prolific self-publisher. He helped to co-found uh, Cape, the Chicago Comics Expo. Yeah. yeah. We love Max. You know, you may have also seen him if you go to like noise shows and stuff. He's sort of the, the bouncer about town. <laughs> the care. artist's bodyguard. Yeah, takes care of all of us. Thank you, We're, Max. We're uh, really excited to have him here tonight. Without further ado, Max, Max Morris. Morris.
shadow. Shadow. Yeah. 
Let's hear it for Max Morris again. Yeah! Thank you. Thank you to his band. Katie Hart, Jeff Goulet, Janice Lynn, and some pre-recorded accompaniment. Not yet. By Jill from Forced and Femininity. Thank you, Max. to the Suicide Prevention Hotline. Um, so, yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, it's a sad thing to talk about, but thank you. Um, yeah, she was a wonderful weirdo. My, I didn't know her very well, but she had a easily four foot wide boudoir picture of herself up in her bedroom mounted next to a whip. I think she'd love that I was here reading to y'all today. <laughs> So I'm going to be reading two things, um, both relatively short. Uh, the first is, uh, and both of them are trying to get at how to answer the question of what I'm up to these days, because there's not an easy way to answer. I have a one-year-old and a three-year-old, and I'm home with them all day, and I'm also trying really hard to keep working, and it, I'm often failing at that. So that's what this is about. All right, Woo! let me see how get this up. Hang on. There we are, thank you. Is there, is the feedback kind of, is it okay? No one cares, okay. <laughs> All right, on writing. When I'm not writing, I'm not writing a comic called Coyote where a young woman witnesses a group of coyotes walking through the middle of her neighborhood which sets off an unraveling of self through anxiety. I'm not writing the most beautiful treatise against beauty. I'm not writing a novel called This World Is Not My Home, where a ghost fills the walls of a house with flowers and scraps of poetry to protect the current occupants. I'm not drawing a series of women in armor surrounded by leaves and sunlight. I'm not writing the children's book everyone assumes I want to write. I'm not drawing still lives or people on the bus. I'm not writing a pathetic memoir. I'm not writing a memoir about poetry and love. I'm not writing a memoir about seeing three birds flying and crying from envy at how freely they're able to move. I'm not writing a memoir about holding my stillborn niece and how that haunts my experience of motherhood. I'm not writing a memoir about intergenerational trauma and bearing witness to my own unanticipated resilience. I'm not writing a memoir about being embarrassed by memoirs. I'm not writing a memoir about prohibitions on memoirs. When I'm not drawing, or not writing a memoir or novel, I'm also not writing any kind of poetry. Not prose poems, not poems made of fragments, not tightened and compressed poems, not conceptual poems, not visual poems, not poems heavy with allusion to critical theory and pop music. I'm not writing epic poetry, though I like what Milton said about lyric poets drinking wine, while epic poets should drink water from a wooden bowl. I drink water from a wooden bowl and still do not write poetry. I am not writing anything that anyone has requested of me or is waiting on. Not a short comics essay or any other sort of essay. Not a round table response, not an interview response. Mm. I am not writing Facebook status updates. I'm not writing Twitter status updates. I'm not writing thank you notes or apologies. I'm not writing gallery proposals, grant applications or panel proposals. I'm not writing book reviews. I'm not writing blurbs, I'm not writing a history of these monstrous times, or of past monstrous times, or of any future times, and not even the history of these visions which are with me all day and all night. 
There are years, days, hours, minutes, weeks, moments, and other measures of time spent in the production of not writing. Not writing is working, and when not working at paid work, working at unpaid work like caring for friends or caring for family or caring for my house, and when not at unpaid work like caring, caring also for my human body, and when not caring for my human body, many hours, weeks, years, and other measures of time spent caring for the mind, like reading or learning, and when not reading and learning and also making things like food, costumes, plants, decorative items, and when not reading and learning and working and making and reading and caring and worrying, there's also politics. And when not politics, also the kind of medication which is consumption of too much food and drink, of sex or cultural products, of the internet also. And then time spent staring into space that is not a screen. And also all the time spent walking on errands, particularly here where it's very long to get anyone on the bus, walking to take my boy to school and back too. There is illness and injury which has produced a great deal of not writing. There is the slow recognition that minor injury is endemic to my new body, which is always sore and pulling its scars, scars which I tend to instead of writing. There is disappointment, political outrage, heartbreak, and realistic thinking, which has produced a great deal of not writing. There is celebration of friends and family and holidays and markers of seasonal change, which has produced even more not writing. There is pregnancy, which has been like illness and injury and celebration and taken up many hours with not writing. There's caring for elders, researching the cost of home hospice care while cookie dough chills in the refrigerator while I do not write. There's being anxious or depressed, which takes up many hours. There's trauma, which is brief and clear and also lingers around and emerges unpredictably as if it will forever. Trauma is always the indirect producer of so much not writing. There are times with friends spent in the production of not writing. There's talking which is like writing and which produces not writing in equal measure to producing writing. There's sleep, which is sometimes dreams, which is closer to writing in that they're not intruded upon by necessities of all the paid work, care work, social expectations, romantic love, or talking to people. There are photographs one takes of oneself and other people and these also produce not writing because it's simpler to document how unreal this life feels than to make it solid through writing. There is dressing and undressing, sometimes too much, particularly when one has to meet new people. There is the way that the lives of others seem only enviable when they say, I wrote this, read what came from my sharpened heart and deep feeling brain, when all my time is spent not writing. Like right now, when I should be dealing with bills, mail, laundry, my bedroom, months of emails from August onward, even though it's now February with bath and song and bedtime routines and my children, with my jobs, with my care, with my contents in my refrigerator, with the cat's litter box, with friendship, with Facebook and Twitter, with teaching my son how to hop on one foot, with taking my daughter to the cardiologist, with my body which wants to exercise or sleep, with, with my body which wants to rest and drink some tea, with my body which wants to take a shower and get cleaned up, which wants sex, which mostly wants to swim, even though it's far too cold. There is envy, which is also mixed with repulsion, if those do not have a long list of not writing to do. It's easy to imagine not writing, because there have been years and months of days that I have thought the way to live was not writing, since I knew what writing consists of. And I have thought, I do not want to do that. And writing steals from my loved ones. And writing steals from my life and gives me nothing but pain and worry. Or writing steals from my already empty bank account. Or writing gives me ideas that I do not need or want. And yet, I frame the years and months and hours and minutes of my life as not writing, a half step removed. My son's encounter with a perfect strawberry should pull me back into the room, a lesson in the joy and necessity of unfiltered sensory pleasure. Instead, I think, I am not writing about watching him eat a perfect strawberry. I often wish it were otherwise. Okay. Now on a very different note, Thank you. So this is how many days I actually spent. Um, I, so February 1st is hourly comics day, um, and I, there's no way in hell I could do that, so I just took notes all day and drew comics when I could this month about what happened that day. I think I'm going to make some comments about us. If I were to draw you as an animal, what kind of animal would you like to be? A snake. <laughs> Why a snake? Because snakes are cool and wiggly. 
Mm, what about your sister? A raccoon. Why a raccoon? Because of how much she loves trash. <laughs> yeah, that tracks. <laughs> Meet Snake. He'll be four years old in nine days. He admires Ernie, but knows he's a Bert. I like playing with kids who are orderly. <laughs> He loves spiders, carnivores, babies, and tap dancing. He's very into rules, order, and being right. Did you know that Raffi is wrong? He sings everything grows, but everything doesn't grow. Cars don't grow, chairs don't grow, a spoon doesn't grow, concrete doesn't grow. He's been asking about death since he could first form sentences. He has more love and capacity for physical affection than his small body contained, and he is always touching me, like all the time he is touching me. If I'm cooking or pooping or climbing a ladder, he is touching me, y'all, it's a lot. <laughs> Meet Raccoon. She's one and a half years old. She loves dogs, sticks, crayons, and cozy accessories. She also loves trust falls and will just throw herself backwards on things, what the fuck? <laughs> One friend says Raccoon is the most authoritative, authoritative person I know. She has some kind of very cool magnetic charisma. Like when she first started getting into sticks, I thought maybe I should start getting into sticks. And then I realized I was trying to impress a cool toddler and put the stick back. But only when Raccoon wasn't looking. Mom, can you turn on the light? Snake, it's 3 a.m., go back to bed. Can you please turn on the light first? Oh, okay, buddy, then bed. What's going on? Do I have a nosebleed? <laughs> <laughs> hey, mom. Yes. What's up, buddy? But <laughs> wouldn't it be so cute and special if Raccoon and I die next to each other? <laughs> What are you doing out there? <laughs> no, I mean when we're elders. Hey, mom, can you please get me a plain bagel and yes, milk? Hey, mom, do kids sometimes die? <laughs> but... <laughs> 7.50 a.m. This is what my blood vessels tell me to do every day. But... A mouse took a stroll through the deep, dark wood. Belly button. <laughs> so we skipped from the oven and into dough, all ready to rise in the night kitchen. Mom, my stomach has been growling for a hundred days. Could you please get me an apple and cheese stick? You got it, Snake. Hey, Mom, I'm doing something cute with our little tot. Come see. Ah! Hey, Mom, let's play hide and seek. I'm hiding. 7.51 a.m. <laughs> when you die, I'll keep your ashes to remember your wife. Wife? I mean life. I love you, Mom. <laughs> Belly button. <laughs> Editorial note, all questions were expertly answered with patience and honesty and sensitivity to age appropriateness because I am an excellent parent, usually. Thank you. Hey, Mom, when the sun expands, will Jupiter still be made of gas? Hey, Mom, why doesn't Winnie the Pooh wear panties? Hey, Mom, if a werewolf bit you when he was a person, like, during the day, would you still get turned into a werewolf? <laughs> hey, Mom, why did all the kids on bikes say I couldn't be friends with Macy? But! <laughs> hey, Mom, if a love spider bites you, you fall in love with the spider for a whole day. Do you know what love spiders eat? Seeds and human skin. Hey, Mom, you should make a comic about a love spider. Mom, what do I do if a stranger comes into my room at night? What do we do if there's a fire? What do we do if there's a tornado? Snow! Hey, Mom, why do some people not speak English? Why do some kids say boys can't be friends with girls? What would happen to a little kid if the mom and dad die but the kid doesn't? Down. Ah! Hey, Mom, I have a very, 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 very tricky question for you. Why do we have lips? <laughs> hey, Mom, 
Mom, why does Calvin, Calvin and Hobbes, bully Susie? Why does his teacher get mad at him? He's not very nice to his mama. Hey, Mom, I think you forgot apples. We have to go back to the store. <laughs> Down! We can't go back to the store. You'll be okay without apples, all right? Mom, you seem frazzled. Did you drink too much coffee? <laughs> I need you to take three deep breaths and then apologize to me for that, okay? <laughs> These are all true. Wow. Wow. I love you, Mom. Hey, Mom, what if you and Dad break police rules? Or what if police make a mistake and you go to jail? Who would tell me? I miss all my little buddies. I can't wait for spring so I can see them again. The spiders and ants and birds. I have a very good spring idea. We can get some glue and some birdseed and stick the birdseed to the end of my shoes. <laughs> and then a bird will see it and think, ooh, that looks nice. <laughs> and we can swing together. <laughs> but that's a plan for spring, not today, okay? <laughs> hey, Mom, can we go get some glue? <laughs> Listen to the Winnie the Pooh audiobook for the third time today. The wonderful thing about Tigger is Tigger's a wonderful thing. Ball. When you learn to bounce, you should keep it slow, so you gotta keep your bounces low. It's gonna be great, it's gonna be great, it's gonna be great. Strike me down, give me all you got. Bounce me, trounce me, flounce me, pounce me. Do it, do it, do it. It's gonna be great, it's gonna be great, it's gonna be great. The voice actor playing Tigger is putting a lot of sexual energy into this performance. I wonder what the voice actor looks like. I should look it up. No, remember what happened last time. Ooh, the voice actor playing the cat in the hat is putting a lot of sexual energy into this performance. I wonder what the voice actor looks like. I should look it up. <laughs> nah, I'm just feeling myself right now. I'll be good when Tom gets home. <laughs> Three hours later. Hey, love, how is... Hi, I love you and I need you to not touch me. Can you take the kids? I need to sit in the bathroom alone. I'm so sorry I'm yelling. I have a very good question. I guess Raccoon is tired. I'll be back down in a few minutes, okay, Snake? Okay, night night, my sweet little tater tot. Tongue. 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 Quick calculation, child of delight versus disgust and risk of contagion. Tongue. She loves it so much. I wish there was a moth in my room. I would lure it close to me. And I would cuddle with the moth. And feed it to a hawk. And then I'd get to cuddle with a hawk. Wouldn't that be so nice? <laughs> Three hours later again, almost 9 p.m. <laughs> the <laughs> special thanks to Snake and Raccoon, who are just the best. Yeah, let's do that. We made this like uh, alternate frog version.
version of the logo. So this is our logo made by Son and Zimmer here in Chicago. It's a snake. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> That's the new logo. That's the new logo. <laughs> turns out... Uh, right. <laughs> oh, my cable's off. Well, we have two shirts left. This is an XL. To the back? Like middle. Middle? Shit. <laughs> Here comes the shirt. Nice. <laughs> yeah, nice. That was a... <laughs> oh, man. Uh, actually, can we get one more round of applause for Marty Gallagher? Yeah, please. <laughs> Getting ahead of ourselves. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. Could... See the legs? Are... These? Yeah, yeah, that's the leg. <laughs> it's like shit. Yeah. I... <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> Well, uh, our next reader. Yeah. <clears throat> the last of the night, Lyra Hill. Yep. Oh, man. What can we say about Lyra? Uh, <laughs> a lot. Yeah. Yep. Lyra basically invented what we're doing. Yeah. Yes. Performative comics reading series here in Chicago called Brain Frame. That's right. Spiritual predecessor to Z Not Dead. That's right. Uh, of which I was the intern for the last two years, I'd say. Very cool. Yeah, with no hyperbole, we would not be here on the stage now without the work that Lyra Hill has done. Yep. This is uh, Lyra's third time reading at Zine Not Dead. Mm -hmm. uh, they came all the way from Los Angeles LA, to be here. Where they now host uh, Multicult, a, a variety show, ritual show. <laughs> It's like this, but better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. We're so yeah. excited to yeah. have Clear them here. Yeah, we're very happy to have them on stage tonight. Um, yeah. Please uh, give it up for Clear Hill. Hill. Can we 
putting you on practice right now? Work me on. Yeah, good. Practice. Okay, good. Who else? Who else? Okay, yeah. Yeah, you got it. Uh, what else? Um, that's the consent disclaimer. And now for a little bit of energy work. So I want everyone to hum. Keep humming, keep going. Start adding some different notes. Make it louder. Okay, good, this is helping me. Okay, now I want you to stick your hands out, point them at me, and wiggle your fingers. I really need this. I need this a lot. Okay, now I'm going to walk through the crowd, and uh, if you want, I want you to rub my legs and arms. I wore a fuzzy jumpsuit for you. Please, I want this. <laughs>
can't do anything right. Take it away from me, Daddy. <laughs> Sad cry, a pathetic moan of me. What is this? This puddle on the floor. Soft, shapeless, shallow flesh waiting to be molded, gathered up by me. I will gather you in my arms. In my strong arms, I will. I will give you shape. I know what you need. I know what you need. I'm coming. I see you. 
quoi, si tu veux. Ouais. Hold you here so that you are forced to feel it. I want you to grow as I have seen you grow. I expect great things from you because I have seen you do great things. I will teach you how to be calm and relaxed. I will teach you how to be tall and proud, and I will never let you go. <laughs> I love to look at you. Uh, I am your passion. I am your pride. I am with you always. Watching. Waiting. Supporting you when you cannot support yourself. No, I will not help you. But I will watch. I will watch you help yourself. Yes, you have been bad. Yes, sometimes you are the asshole. Yes, you are shitty, complicit. And yes, I will punish you when we're alone. Right now we're not alone. Watching you, watching you get better, watching you be brave, watching you stand tall, watching you flex your muscle. Oh baby, I am so proud of you. I am a part of you, I am inside of you. I am driving you up, making you tall, making you strong, filling you up with pride. Don't look away. Look at me. Don't look away. Look at me. I am inside you. I am a part of you. You are your daddy. No. No, I'm not leaving. No. No, you can't make me. You can't make me because I'm sick of watching you relax. I'm sick of letting you off the hook. Yeah, it's cute. Yeah, I like it. Oh, oh, you can cry, cry in my arms. Crying is good for you. Growing is good for you. Pain is good for you. Resilience is good for you. Are you uncomfortable? Don't worry, baby. This too shall pass. But not me. Not me. I am always here. Deep inside of you. Can you feel it? Can you feel your power? Don't resist it. Let it grow. Suck it up. Take it in. Life is hard. Grow a pair. Be a man, metaphorically speaking. You can laugh. Yeah, you can cry. Whatever you need. Just don't give up. Never give up. Keep going. I can wait. I can wait. As long as it 
takes for you to rise to the occasion and meet me here. I would like nothing better than to watch you grow and grow and grow and grow until you're so big that you can't see me anymore. Facebook page, Zine not dead. Zine not dead. One word. We're gonna, I, I was just gonna say it's uh, supposedly a quarterly reading series, so there should be yeah. three more this year. Uh huh. We'll try. Let's see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> Fill it out. Uh -huh. um, and yeah, I guess we have to manifest. Oh yeah, um, that's true. Um, please, I would like to invite all of you here to join us okay. in. Uh, the Z Not Dead chant. Yep, just one last chant. One last little uh, Z, Z Not, not dead. dead. Z, Z not, not Dead. Z 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 not dead, Z not dead. We're gonna do it until you do it. Z not dead, 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 Z not dead. They're getting it. Yeah, they're getting it. That's it. Thank you. We're gonna be sticking around for another 20 minutes or so. Um, merch table is still open. Yeah. Maybe you can get another beer. I don't know. Yeah. Um, otherwise, thank you all for coming. We'll see you next time. Yeah. Uh, goodbye. Thank goodbye. you. Bye bye. Hell yeah. Hell yeah.
Nada mais, não.